Excel. So today I'm going to be talking Excel. about uh, cloud native networking with TTPF and a little bit of uh, policy enforcement. So <clears throat> we're going to go through you know exactly what cloud native networking is, a little bit of what the landscape of cloud native networking looks like, a few different players, and I'm going to focus on uh, one specific implementation of uh, cloud native networking, uh, Cilium. We'll go through some, some policy. Uh, I'll have a quick demo around the policy. Um, and I'll uh, have hopefully time for one or two questions at the end. So cloud native networking is really um, networking for containers. Typically, when you're talking about cloud native, you're also talking about Kubernetes. Um, the networking in Kubernetes and cloud native world it's typically based on the standards set by the Container Network Interface Project. It's a project that lives under the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Obviously, all kind of anything with the word cloud native in it is operated by CNCF. Um, so the, cloud, uh, the Container Network Interface is a specification uh, for container uh, networking. The specification itself is super lightweight and it only describes two things. Um, it describes the action arguments that need to be taken to add a container to a network, and the action arguments need to be taken to remove a container from the network. Um, it essentially delegates everything apart from that to the implementation of the spec. I think this is actually um, a pattern that Kubernetes has adopted across essentially all uh, layers of abstraction that they have. They now have the container storage interface and the container runtime interface. And I think it's actually one of the things that Kubernetes has done well in comparison to several other open source uh, infrastructure projects. You might talk about OpenStack or other ones like that, where um, a lot of the implementation actually ends up in tree, and you need a lot of upstream code in order to support any different implementations. So using a lightweight spec like this is a way that they kind of open up the landscape and let anyone kind of come and play and do uh, and innovate with different implementations of it. So any project that implements this basic specification can be called a CNI plugin. Uh, I could write a bash script that answers these two things with these arguments and I could call it a CNI plugin. It won't be a very good one, but it'll be a CNI plugin. So the CNI plugin landscape falls into a couple kind of major categories. The first category um, is remnant networks. So typically, um, an implementation that falls under this category, an example of which is Cube Router, um, the way it works is by installing routes on your hosts that are running your containers, um, and then propagating that routes through um, throughout all of your hosts that are part of the cluster. Kubrater um, is, is an example of that. And then uh, Kubrater, however, doesn't support any advanced features um, that are described. So the CNI plugin is one thing, and Kubrater supports those, but there are other kind of extensions to networking in the cloud native space. For example, uh, network policy in Kubernetes it would be kind of considered, considered an advanced feature um, for a CNI plugin because it's not required by the spec, but any um, CNI plugin that is kind of worth using is going to implement it. So an example of a routed network CNI plugin that has advanced features is Project Calico. This is kind of the de facto CNI plugin that anyone who's kind of running a, a Hello World Kubernetes on their own is probably going to use this. Um, because it's super simple, it's pretty easy to understand. It installs all of your routes directly onto your host's routing table, um, so you can see a whole bunch of slash 32 routes that send traffic to individual containers. Um, that's one of the benefits that routed network CNI plugins have, is that it's relatively easy to understand and track that way. Um, so Calico is a routed network CNI plugin that implements advanced features like network policy. A second type of uh, CNI plugins that you see are uh, CNI plugins that are implemented using VXLAN overlays to uh, connect your containers together. 
Similar to QBroker, Flannel is uh, a dead simple implementation of uh, the CI plugin using VXLAN overlays. Um, you can install Flannel and it'll help you uh, have containers that can talk to each other, but outside of that you can't do much more. The example of uh, a VXLAN based CI plugin that people actually use because it supports advanced features uh, would be something like WeaveNet. Um, WeaveNet is uh, created by a company called WeaveWorks, and they've actually started the process to donate the WeaveNet project to the CNCF as an open source project. Um, so that's uh, something interesting that's happening with that. WeaveNet is based on VXLAN, but they do have um, a few extra features in their agent that runs on the host. Um, an example of that is that it uses um, a gossip protocol to, con to, connect, to connect all the nodes and also share some information about the nodes inside the cluster. Um, so WeaveNet has the ability to support uh, partially connected uh, uh, clusters. So because it has this protocol where all the nodes are kind of sharing the other nodes that they can talk to, you can have uh, node A and C that are not directly connected, um, but if there's a node B in the middle that can talk to both of them, uh, nodes A and C can kind of use B as a hop to get um, between each other. So that's an interesting feature that WeaveNet has. Um, and then in the middle here we have Cilium. Uh, it's one of the reasons that uh, we like Cilium as engine. Cilium is the CNI plugin that we use to run our uh, platform. And um, it has a lot of features and it's very flexible. So it can support both routed and VSI overlay. Uh, modes, and it also has advanced features, including uh, network policy and layer 7 network policy. Um, Cilium's kind of tagline is that it is um, an API-aware uh, CNI plugin. So it has uh, features to um, inspect and make policy decisions based on um, application-level uh, traffic. So we'll get into a little bit of that now. So, <clears throat> Cilium is a CNI plugin that implements a spec using eBPF and XDP as kind of the underpinning technologies. Um, eBPF stands for the Extended Berkeley Packet Filter. Um, I'll get into that in the next slide to just kind of do a little bit of a history lesson there. XDP is the Express Data Path. Um, XDP is used to enable Cilium to connect to um, a physical interface kind of as close as possible for uh, a software layer uh, networking uh, plugin can, can get. So it will kind of inject uh, Cilium's implementation directly after the drive in, in the operating system. Um, BPF programs allow for efficient packet processing uh, running in the kernel. Um, and then Cilium is also loading all of its endpoint IP mappings, all that information into BPF maps that are also living inside of the kernel and have fast access into them. So getting into a little bit of the nitty gritty here, if you're super interested, you can go ahead and click those links. Um, they're very long documents. The original BPF link there is a link to the actual paper that initially uh, was kind of the original implementation of the BPF. But for the purposes of this talk, BPF uh, originally defined kind of a couple of main things that we're interested in, which are the BPF virtual machine that leverages uh, CPU instructions uh, to enable packet um, buffering and filtering um, from directly from an interface. Um, so Obviously, there's a lot of kind of complexities happening in the kernel there, but BPF is kind of the origination of that. Um, eBPF is a slightly more recent development. Um, as of Linux kernel 3.18, I think, uh, eBPF is kind of generally available. Um, essentially, it takes the original implementation of BPF it adds a whole bunch of extra CPU instructions from x86 and ARM and instruction sets. 
It adds a just-in-time uh, kernel compiler for Linux, um, and it also adds uh, an additional compiler for BPF bytecode. That's some very specific here, but BPF uh, programs are written in bytecode. Nobody wants to write bytecode, um, so we have a compiler for that that can be leveraged to make writing uh, BPF programs a little bit easier. Um, so how it all works is really using uh, XDP. So XDP, like I mentioned, is a way to get the, the BPF program as close to the physical interface as possible. So in this diagram we have uh, the lowest level there with the drivers and devices. That's kind of as low as the operating system is going to go. And XDP allows us to insert our BPF programs before the TCP IP stack of the operating system is processed. So we're able to get, you know, essentially the raw packets from the device. And based on um, Cilium's implementation, we're running uh, both filtering and uh, forwarding decisions in a BPF program, which is then passed uh, on to the uh, kernel level TCP IP uh, stack. So XDP is really just this diagram here showing that we can insert these BPF programs at a very kind of low level of the network. And this is why uh, Cilium can provide some uh, performance enhancements in comparison to some of the other uh, CNI plugins that were mentioned on that previous slide. So Kubernetes network policy um, is kind of going up a few layers. Network policy is an object that exists in Kubernetes and it essentially allows us to describe um, a policy of what traffic can reach which pods and which uh, containers um, and which containers can reach which destinations. So policies can use any combination of um, container, namespace selectors, IP blocks, and uh, destination point, uh, ports. So network policy, again, is just a specification for an object in Kubernetes, and it allows us to define these policies. What Cilium is going to do is it's going to take these objects and it's going to run a translation, and it's going to update those BPF programs that are loaded into your kernel with these policies so that your forwarding decisions are now informed by your policy, and you can uh, have control of uh, your, your network access in Kubernetes. So, like I said, essentially in this case, we're using um, Kubernetes as our input to Cilium's uh, policy repository, and the Cilium daemon is uh, taking that as input and it's recompiling its bytecode and it's injecting it into the BPF programs that are running in the kernel uh, that are connecting your physical interface to your containers. So that's uh, kind of all the machinations happening in the background. Um, and this is what, what Cilium, uh, Daemon, the agent that's running on all of your hosts, is doing. It's running a reconciliation loop against any new inputs, and it's uh, making changes to those BPF programs as necessary. So I've got a quick demo here. So here I have a Kubernetes cluster running, and I have two pods. Um, 
BusyBox is essentially the pod that I'm going to be running my policy on, and I'm going to be controlling what has access to this BusyBox pod. And I'm going to be using SourcePod as a way to kind of verify that my policies are being enforced. So quickly, we can see that the BusyBox pod has an IP of uh, 192.168.4.2, and the source pod has an IP of 192.168.5.201. Um, now I have a label on my BusyBox pod which is going to allow me to enforce a policy. And I've essentially defined this network policy object in Kubernetes. You can see it's reaching the uh, networking API of Kubernetes. It's a network policy type. The main important here is the specification. I have a pod selector that's matching the labels and it's searching for a label policy set to the value enabled. So this is going to match the policy to my BusyBox pod, and it's going to enforce the policy described by uh, the rules below. In this case, essentially I'm saying that I'm defining an ingress policy. The only ingress that's allowed is ingress that's coming from a pod that matches the label having access equals true. So what I can do just show these labels that I have. So we can see that I have no labels on my source pod, um, but I do have a policy enabled label on my BusyBox pod. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply that object um, that's defining my policy. Now, if I do that, and I'm going to exec into my source pod. So now I'm in the context of the source pod, and what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to ping to the pod that I've just defined my policy on. I'm not getting much through there. So what I can do is I can exit and I'm going to add the label to my pod source pod. And I'm going to add the label access is enabled. And now Cilium is recognizing this as a background and it's modifying um, the identity of the source pod to recognize that it has this label. And if I exec back in here, and I try to ping again, now I can ping. So by defining that object in Kubernetes, I've told Cilium that I've defined this policy, I've recompiled BPF bytecode, and I can now uh, ping between these pods. So that's just a quick demo of exactly what network policy is, and how it can you know, help us define the expected behavior um, when we're doing container networking. <clears throat> and if I just run back here, that was a super basic demo showing only uh, you know layer three network policy. I'm only enforcing directly on kind of a whole endpoint, but. The nice thing about Cilium, like I mentioned, is it has all these features that allow you to enforce policy at layer seven. And you know, here's a list of some of the um, things that you can use to kind of match your policies on. For example, if you're running HTTP traffic between pods, you can uh, filter based on the path. You can filter based on uh, methods being used to specific paths, um, specific hosts or headers even that you can add to um, your requests. And you can define a policy based on all of that that will be enforced uh, in your BPF bytecode. Uh, Cilium even has support uh, in beta now for uh, Kafka uh, as a protocol. So you can uh, you know, filter based on topic, client IDs, Kafka roles. Um, so this is really 
about Cilium using its underpinning technologies of eBPF and XDP to uh, do container networking in an efficient way so that you can also enable these additional features and have reasonable performance while enforcing these. And just a quick example, you know, kind of description of what you can do with layer 7 policy where if you're going to define a policy, you can say, well, these containers can access, you know, my HTTP endpoints, they can post to hello, index, and they can get anything under the root, but I'm going to explicitly deny a uh, policy to, you know, to delete something at the path slash concern. So just using kind of the primitives defined on this slide, you can define uh, an additional layer of, of policy at layer 7 um, using silicon. Then how many questions? We got a few. So uh, I'm Jean Plateau with uh, Sura. Mm -hmm. um, so this is very interesting. Have you done performance testing? Like can you do wire rate 10 gig or 100 gig interface <laughs> with 64 byte packet? That's a good question. Um, there have been uh, quite a few publications of performance <coughs> testing um, with different CNI plugins done. In, I'd say like the past eight months. Um, I think in general, you can you can get relatively close to line rate. Um, you you know you can definitely get kind of above the nine uh, gigabit layer if you're doing like a ten a ten gigabyte. Um, it tends to be a little bit different when you're enforcing certain types of policies because you're obviously adding some uh, you know latencies in there, um, but it, it's relatively efficient still. Um, I think, um, I didn't touch on it, but there are additional features in Cilium that give it kind of an edge over other CNI plugins because it has the ability to bypass other um, pieces of the Kubernetes networking, which I didn't get into. Um, but if you're interested, I can certainly send you a link to some of those publications that I wrote. The uh, second question, does it do, could you do load balancing on DNS packets? Um, do you have a bunch of DNS instances to load balance across? So, I believe so. Um, Cilium does also have DNS aware network policy, so your policies can be defined on DNS endpoints too, okay. um, for ingress and egress. So, there's definitely some policies that you can do in there, but from a load balancing perspective, that's typically not implemented by the CNI plugin, uh, but some other layers in Kubernetes. So it's kind of dependent on your exact uh, configuration. Right, thank you. We have, we have time for another quick question. There was a second question over here. Yeah, just, it's super quick. Uh, I got all kinds of stuff, works great, and then people turn on HTTPS, and all of my security fails. At what, the, the, at what stage does this get uh, policy matched? Such, such that, does it, headers and the methods, do they work under HTTPS? Uh, yes, uh, they, they do work, work with HTTPS still, so all of these should still be exposed even if you're running an HTTPS package, because um, you're not actually inspecting any of the payload, you're just inspecting things that are available in the header. Thank you, Rick.